Hi everybody, and welcome back to another reflection on the day's mass readings. Today is Saturday of week 19 in Ordinary Time, the memorial of St. Maximilian Kolbe, priest and martyr. My name's Clement Harold. I'm a recent graduate of Franciscan University and a new employee here at the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. Now in today's reflection, we're gonna focus our attention primarily on the Old Testament reading from Joshua. Although, as we'll see, we can still draw some practical connections between this first reading as well as today's short gospel reading from Matthew chapter 19. Now, the first reading for today describes the famous scene of Joshua calling on the Israelites to renew their covenant with the Lord. This renewal took place at Shechem, an old Canaanite city located in modern-day Palestine and a place of profound importance for the Israelite people. It was at Shechem, you'll remember, that Abraham and later on Jacob both made camp upon entering the promised land. And it was at Shechem that they built altars and consecrated themselves to God. But Shechem was also the place where Jacob disposed of all the statues of the false gods, which his family had accumulated, which obviously forms an interesting backdrop for today's reading about turning the idols, uh, turning out the idols in our lives. And finally, it was also at Shechem where 30 years prior to the events of today's reading, Joshua led the people of Israel in ratifying their covenant with the Lord. And so for the Israelites of Joshua's day, Shechem was a place steeped in cultural and religious significance. And I think sometimes with, with all of our 21st century technology, our wealth, and a certain detachment from the land, we often lack that deep appreciation of places which ancient people possessed. Nevertheless, there are some examples, even in our own day, of places like Gettysburg or Ground Zero or the National Mall. These are places which evoke powerful images or emotions in our minds. And similarly, Joshua's decision to renew the covenant at Shechem wasn't just a passing fancy. It was a conscious decision to remind Israel of her history. Now he's at Shechem and here Joshua doesn't mince his words. He knows that idolatrous tendencies have cropped up among his people, and he is having none of it. And I think sometimes with our modern sensibilities, we might advocate a more tolerant or more gradual approach. But for Joshua, there's no time for that. This guy, as we learn at the end of the reading, is 110 years old, and he is very fed up with half-hearted religion. Why is that? Was well, because for Joshua, half-hearted religion is false religion. And as Jesus reminds us in the Gospels, we are either for him or we're against him. And this should honestly make us deeply uncomfortable. According to Joshua, the choice for the ancient Israelites is clear. Either you cast out these foreign gods and commit your hearts fully to the one true God, or else you remain in your idolatrous ways. Notice as well that Joshua isn't advocating some kind of Kierkegaardian blind leap of faith. No, Joshua is very careful to remind Israel of everything that God, the Lord has done for them. How God took them out of Egypt, how he performed miracles, how he drove the Amorites from the land. In other words, as Dr. Hahn likes to say, he's a father who keeps his promises. And it's with this assurance, with this assurance in mind, that Israel can continue to trust in him now. But of course, as we know in our own lives, this trust isn't easy. Even when we're reminded of the great things God has done for us. In particular, it's not easy to cast out the idols in our lives, no matter how much we know we ought to. Like the Israelites in Joshua's day, we too live in a very idolatrous culture, immersed in a multitude of evil ways. We live in the 21st century West in a culture which has largely rejected God. A culture where, as we know, little blameless children are routinely slaughtered in the womb. A culture where little boys and girls are brought up being told they don't deserve a mum or a dad. A culture where many children and many young people aren't even sure what it means anymore to be human, to be male or female. We live in a culture, my brothers and sisters, that's made an idol out of pure selfishness. A culture that's exclusively aimed at letting us adults live whatever kind of life we want to live. And we live in a culture where we've opted to worship nobody but ourselves. And we've turned our back on the very God who created us, who called us into existence, and who died for us. So we see that the situation that we face today isn't all that different from Joshua's. And yet it was precisely in a setting of cultural evil and human weakness that Joshua could loudly proclaim, Choose this day whom you will serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are dwelling. Choose this day whom you will serve, my brothers and sisters. The gods your peers and neighbors serve, the gods of money, of pleasure, of power, the gods of abortion, of gender ideology, of secularism. Choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua is a man, a manly man, who knows his own heart, who knows his responsibilities. And so he's not content with making his own personal commitment to the Lord. He chooses to bring his household along with him. And this, I think, has to be our resolution too, dear brothers and sisters. We need to choose this day to pledge ourselves fully to God, to reject any kind of half-hearted Christianity, to tear down the idols in our lives. Let us be like the little children whom Jesus greets in the Gospels, pure and unassuming in our love for the Lord. And let's do this as well for the children, for the untold millions of children suffering in our culture, because for too long, good men have stood by and done nothing while allowing evil to prosper. Like Joshua, we need to commit ourselves to the Lord this day, renewing our covenant with him, rejecting the idols in our lives, and remembering that it is to the childlike of heart that the kingdom of heaven belongs. This has been Clem Harold with the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. Thank you so much for joining me.